Morning. That's you open. Good morning, members. Uh, we do have a quorum, so I'd like to call the meeting to order. And I welcome all members to the first meeting of this, the Committee for Communities. Tafalcha more a leg a riv. Augusta is more an honour dom a vez a kiahirlac or an kushta tawak dak show. Um, I'm very honoured to be a uh, chair of this very, very important committee. I'd like to say how much I'm looking forward to working with all of the members and uh, in order to advise, assist and scrutinise the Minister in carrying out his duties. And I do hope that through effective scrutiny of policies, strategies and legislation in a positive and constructive manner, it is my hope the Department will reciprocate that approach. It will be important, I believe, members, for us to build good relationships with the Department and with the many stakeholders that are uh, involved with this Department. It is particularly important, I believe, to look at ways in which stakeholders can make a positive contribution to the work of the committee, uh, over and above simply giving evidence or making written submissions. So I hope that's something that we can explore over the next number of months. I'm acutely conscious that we do only have three years left of this current mandate, and there, that will in, involve a lot for the committee to do. It is important that we don't, however, lose focus on actually delivering improved outcomes to communities within that three-year term. Um, I want to wish each and every one of you members the very best in, in, in the coming term. I look forward to getting to know you all better, to working with you, and my door will be open at any stage, as will the clerks, if any of you want support or to raise any issues. Please feel free to do that at any time. So in terms of the public gallery, can I please remind uh, anyone in the public gallery that mobile phones must be turned off, mobile tablet devices can be used through a Wi-Fi connection, and all devices should be muted. Password details are available in the gallery for anyone waiting to connect to the Assembly's Wi-Fi network. 3G and 4G should not be used, and no recordings or photographs are to be taken. Can I remind members about the protocols regarding the use of electronic devices? Please switch all mobile devices to airplane mode and activate Wi-Fi connection. Tablet devices please use discreetly and a way which does not interfere with the proceedings and be aware of the camera when using the tablet device. And it's also, I'm, I'm advised that these microphones are very sensitive so they will pick up any noise from your devices as well. So just be, be aware of that please. So in terms of apologies, I think we have full turnout, Clerk, so there's no apologies today. Um, moving to Chairperson's Business, members to update you, myself and the Deputy Chair uh, had an informal meeting with the <coughs> Minister for Communities on Tuesday the 13th there. It was, I believe, a very positive meeting and we agreed that we want to work collaboratively going forward. Plans are underway to welcome the Minister and the Permanent Secretary to our third meeting on the 29th of this month. So turning now, members, to your pack, I refer you to pages 5 to 7 of your pack, which contain contact details for the committee staff team for your information. Um, all members have that at your disposal. Okay, thanks, members. So moving on then, members, to uh, the clerk's memo at page 9 of your meeting pack. I'd like to advise you all that assembly members are required to register relevant interests in the register of members' interests. Please note that new members have 28 days to register their interest by returning the completed registration form to the Clerk of Standards and also have 28 days to notify him of subsequent changes. I understand the Clerk of Standards has written to all the recently co-opted members to advise them of the rules and registration and will also be arranging to meet them individually to brief them before they return their completed registration forms. Mm -hmm. If members have any queries in relation to that, please speak to the Clerk of Standards. I also remind members that in addition to this requirement, Standing Order 69-5 states that a member who has a financial interest in any matter or a relevant interest in any matter must declare that interest before taking part in any proceedings of the Assembly relating to that matter. Members should also note that proceedings of the Assembly includes meetings of this committee. As this is the first meeting of the committee, members should therefore declare any interest held by them which are relevant to the work of the committee. So I will uh, go, go around members, see if any members have interest to declare. I'll start with myself. Um, I do own residential property in County Tyrone from which rental income is received. I am a committee member of Ahaloo Gaelic Football Club. Um, I am a, a, 
vice chairperson or a member now of Ahalu Credit Union Limited, a vice chairperson of Brantley Area Rural Development Association, and secretary of Brantley Coltus Cultory Iron. I also members have a sister who is elected as a councillor and serves in Mid Ulster District Council. Gail Gildernew should should that be relevant? Um, and Shin Misha, that's 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 the interest that I would have to declare. And maybe go to you, Chair. I have. Chair, yeah. can I just ask? I mean, we've, we've all declared interests, uh, you know, in the, the assembly. So we'll, we'll just be repeating them here, probably. Yeah. But is it necessary to repeat them? Sure. Um, only if it relates to any of the business today on today's agenda. On today's yeah. agenda. Okay, that's fine. So are members content then that, that they, does anyone want to declare anything in relation to today's agenda? Where they sit. Uh, I'm a right. member of Conrad and Gael, yeah. I know there's some communication out there to the committee in relation to that. Uh, I also uh, am the chairman of Nice Con the Jerica Preschool through the medium of Irish and also a member of uh, Common Law Plus Gael, the GAA. Okay. Um, I have declared it on my, in standards and privileges, however, um, just to, to confirm, because we have so many SRs today, um, as many of us would be, I'm a member of the Nilgosh Pension Scheme, and I also have family members that are in receipt of benefits. Thank you. Anyone else? Morris? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a trustee and member of the Harry Gregg Foundation, a youth soccer, a uh, member of the North West Football Association, member of the Korean District League. Uh, Ad hoc disciplinary committee at the AFA and soon to be elected on the AFA council. So I have a big sport in this. You do indeed. So come up every <laughs> now and again on this committee. <laughs> Thank you, Follow Morris. You. And hopefully your disciplinary experience won't won't be needed in this committee. <laughs> but we'll see. Anyone else, members? Yeah, Sian. Yeah, it was just um, my. It's not myself, but my family are members of Nate Podrick um, GAA Club in Ballycastle, and I am a member of the Ballycastle and Cushendall Credit Union, and. Like Kelly, I'm um, recipient of the Nilgos um, pension scheme and have family members in receipt of benefits. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm a company director of a number of companies that are registered on interest. Uh, I am also uh, a member of uh, Ernest and Columbus GA. Uh, I'm also um, a member of the local Stavang Credit Union. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it for today. Yeah. Yeah. Is that it, members? Yeah. Um, well, as others, uh, these are on my declaration of interest, but I'm, I'm a director of the Greater Shankill Partnership and Argyle Business Centre, and I'm a trustee at North Belfast Working Men's Club, uh, and uh, I'm in receipt of the Nilgos uh, pension scheme as a former councillor. Yeah. Andy? Yeah, sure. Private sector landlord and charity trustee. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, members. Well, I should have mentioned to him, also a member of the Credit Union as well. Castle Derry, Warren Derry. No problem, thank you. Any yes, yes. Obviously, I'll need to mention that I'm a member of the Credit Union as well, Mr. Rands. Okay. A fair play is all for that. It's a good organisation. <laughs> I'll give it a plug. Um, so, thank you, members, for that. So, we're moving on to item four then committee guidance and procedures. So please note, members, the following documents starting at page 12 of the meeting packs, and these include a guide for members on the role and function of the committee office, a guide to the role of the committee chairperson, a guide to the powers and operation of statutory committees for chairpersons and members, and guidance for handling subordinate legislation. I draw members' attention in particular to the issues of privilege and subjudice at paragraphs 46 to 54 of the guide to the powers and operation of statutory committees for chairpersons and members starting at page 27 of your meeting pack. Um, under section, in terms of uh, privilege, under section 50 of the Act, for the purpose of the law of defamation, absolute privilege applies equally to the making of a statement in proceedings of the Assembly and the publication of a statement under the Assembly's authority. This privilege also extends to the meetings of the committee members of the committee. Members should note, however, the privilege does not extend to press conferences or statements made to the press. In terms of subjudice, important to say that subjudice falls under Standing Order 73 of the Standing Orders for the NA Assembly. Subjudice applies from when a criminal charge or charges are brought, or from when notice of an appeal is lodged to the time that the verdict and sentence have been announced, <coughs> or from such when a civil action is listed for trial until judgment is given. In such cases, the matter awaiting adjudication should not be prejudiced by comment in a public session of a committee meeting. 
and in relation to research papers, I would ask members that uh, they agree that uh, to to agree or if they agree that these would be automatically published on the assembly website unless the committee decides for any reason otherwise. Members content? Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So, if members have any queries in relation to the guidance documents, please follow that up with the okay. clerk. Moving on to item five, departmental guidance on timescales for interaction between assembly committees and departments. Um, so I asked members to note that departmental guidance on timescales for interaction between assembly committees and departments at page 57. Can I confirm that that guidance has been noted? Noted. 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 Mm -hmm. In departmental organisation chart, I would ask members to note that the departmental organisation chart at page 64 is there for your information. And I would ask members to note the wide remit of the department and the importance, therefore, of prioritising issues for inclusion in the committee's work programme as this is developed. The uh, number seven committee approach to dealing with correspondence and requests for meetings which are not linked to strategic priorities or statu statutory duties. And there is quite a bit already, so I refer members to pages 66 to 68 of the pack. Are members content to note the standard committee, the standard committee approach to dealing with correspondence and requests for meetings that are not linked to strategic priorities or statutory duties, as detailed at pages 66 and 67 of the pack? Agreed. Agreed yeah. Yeah. Thank you, members. Agreed. Specific requests which have been recently received are set out later in agenda item 11, and we'll come to those. Number eight then, sample protocol and conduct and courtesy in committee meetings. I refer members to page 70 of the pack. Um, I hope members have all had a chance to have a look at that and I would ask our members content to adopt that protocol to underpin the work of this committee and the way we conduct our business. Agreed. 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 Thank you, members. Um, in terms of the arrangements for committee meetings then, I refer members to page 72 of the meeting pack, which deals with the proposed arrangements for the committee's meetings. I draw members' attention to the paragraph on papers, second last paragraph, and I advise members that the meeting pack will be issued on the Monday preceding the meeting. It is my intention that committee meetings will be held in open session unless there are very compelling reasons to do otherwise. I would also note that it is proposed that part of today's meeting is held in closed session, and that is to facilitate a presentation from the examiner of statutory rules and the committee overview. Are members content with those arrangements for future meetings? Great. Thanks, members. <coughs> Item 10, members, subordinate legislation. I refer members to the clerk's memo at page 74 of the meeting pack, which sets out an overview of current subordinate legislation mm -hmm. falling under the remit of the Department for Communities. <coughs> clerk, can I ask you to speak to the memo, please? Yes, yeah, certainly. Thank you. Uh, members, the memo at page 74 uh, is a table across four or five pages and it lists the SRs which were subject to the negative procedure and for which the statutory period mm -hmm. had expired already before we had a committee in place. And so also a list of SRs which are not subject to any um, assembly procedure. There's no decision of the committee required here and they're included in the pack for you to note. So I would advise members that it's normal practice for the committee to delegate to the examiner of statutory rules responsibility for reporting on the technical aspects of statutory, statutory rules. The committee may also wish to agree that the ESR be authorised to report her findings to the committee, to the assembly and to the relevant department. So accordingly, I propose that the Committee for Communities resolves under Standing Order 43 to delegate to the examiner of statutory rules the technical scrutiny of statutory rules referred to the committee under the above mentioned standing order. The committee further resolves that in carrying out this function, the examiner shall be authorised to report his or her finding, technical findings on each statutory rule to the assembly and to the relevant department, as well as to the committee itself, and to publish his report. Do members support the motion? Absolutely, yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you, members. And the committee will begin considering these re those regulations for which the statutory period remains active, subject to the negative resolution procedure later in the meeting. So moving on, members, then, to correspondence. And I refer you to the correspondence memo at item um, page 82, sorry, page 82 of your meeting packs. If the committee is content, a uh, 
for the deputy and I to review diaries with a view to attend the Cliff Edge Coalition. Um, and I think I will be able to attend that. So if committee are content, I would like to attend that Cliff Edge Coalition. And uh, deputy, yeah. are you intending to available to attend that? I am, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and in, in a round table event on behalf of the committee, again, we will check diaries and confirm via the committee team in relation to that event. We're not sure yet. So are members content with that approach? Yeah. Thank you. I would emphasize that including stakeholders in the work of the committee is critical to the success of, a, of our committee in helping deliver outcomes for a range of sectors under the remit of the department. It's important to have a strategic and a focused approach to the committee's work program, which will hopefully take shape over the next few weeks as departmental priorities become clear. Members, whilst we continue to work to identify the committee's priorities for its forward work program, it would be my intention to only attend ad hoc meetings with stakeholders as chair of the committee with your agreement. Um, and that was something that, that we used quite effectively in terms of health, that, that sometimes it was a way to get the view of a group or a concern into committee in a quicker way than, than in a, into a formal evidence session, which, which will clearly be blocked off uh, across a period of time. But it will only be with, with your agreement, members, where that arises. So, uh, members content with that? Agreed, yep. Yeah. Thank you. Are members content then to action all other correspondence as outlined on the correspondence memo at page 82? Um, and for the main pack, and then the table correspondence is at page 3 of your tabled pack. Agreed. Okay. So there was one item there I wanted just to draw attention to around the gambling legislation. Mm. Um, and we had said we'd raise with the Minister, but actually it's such a large item on our horizon, I think it might be worthwhile writing in advance of that session to the Department and asking them for an update on their approach to that legislation, if members are agreed. Yes. Yeah. And then, are members then otherwise content with the uh, proposals put forward in the correspondence memo for okay. dealing with all the other items? Great, thank you, members. Okay, members, moving on to item 12 then, which is um, the forward work programme. I refer you to the clerk's memo and the draft induction plan for the committee at pages 277 to 292 of your pack. This is a suggested approach for the committee to take in preparation for the development of a strategic forward work programme. I ask the clerk uh, to go ahead and summarise for the committee the plan for, for the development of a forward work programme for the, for the committee. Please go ahead, clerk. Thank you, Chair. Um, so, members, by way of trying to condense the number of briefings uh, required across the scale of the department, I'm proposing that we take a sort of staged and logical approach to receiving those briefings. So, um, of I've pulled together a short schematic um, by way of a summary of everything that is being proposed. We've already started communications with the department and with the DALO and um, I'm really just seeking your um, approval to, for the committee team to continue to schedule briefings. We're expecting the Minister and the Perm Secretary week three. We're awaiting the brief for the community's brief from the Minister. Uh, and we have a lot of SRs to deal with in meeting two and meeting three. Moving on from that, in meetings four, five and six, we have confirmation um, from the deputy secretaries in the department that they will come and provide briefings on their areas of responsibility. And then I'm proposing in weeks seven, eight and nine that we also have further briefings as requested from members based on what you've already heard so far. And that's with a view to members having a dedicated session to have a long listing of priorities in about week 10 of the committee. That already takes us up to around May time. So um, I'm all ears really, basically if members are content to go with this approach as outlined or if you would like anything more to speak to Chair or myself yeah. until we have a work forward work programme for the committee. Go ahead, I was just going to say on the briefing, um, no, I fully support what, what way we're proposing going forward, but we will have coming up quite quickly budgets. I know that we've got a budget bill next week, but that's about this year. But the budget for the following year is going to hit us before we actually get to that week 10. I'm just wondering if, if just to keep me right, are one of those meetings with the departments with, with um, Cherry and the budget team planned earlier? Not at this point, but I can progress that. Yeah. Members content that we do progress that to, uh, to yeah. mm -hmm. bring that forward, essentially, Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. Members content, yeah. Thank you, Clerk. Thank you. Anything else, Clerk, in relation to that? No, nope, that's the, it. So, are members broadly content uh, 
for the committee team to schedule meetings in line with that, the draft plan until the committee holds our strategic planning session, at which point hopefully we'll get a, a kind of a, a better idea of what, what we're prioritising as we go forward. Thank you, members. Are members also content to, that the clerk writes to the department to confirm briefings from the minister and the permanent secretary and each of the deputy secretaries? Members content. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And can members, I seek agreement that the meeting enters closed session now in order to discuss a number of committee protocols and to take a briefing from the examiner of statutory rules. Okay. Are members content we go into closed session? <coughs> Thank, you. Thank you, members. Committee Room 29, Sound. 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 Committee Room 29, 
signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed.
Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed.
Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed.
Committee Room 29, Sound. 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 Committee Room 29, Sound.
Committee Room 29, signed. 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 Committee Room 29, signed.
Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed.
Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed.
Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed. Committee Room 29. Signed.
Committee Room 29, signed. <coughs> Committee Room 29, signed. <coughs> Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. <coughs> Committee Room 29, signed. <coughs> Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. <coughs> Committee Room 29, signed. <coughs> Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. <coughs> Committee Room 29, signed. <coughs> Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. <coughs> Committee Room 29, signed. <coughs> Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. <coughs> Committee Room 29, signed. <coughs> Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. <coughs> Committee Room 29, signed. <coughs> Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. Any officials in first place? Somebody else you put us up your approval? No, no, it's somebody, please. Right. You're, you, so you're putting up Zerlin Good Church. Church. Somebody stop. Somebody stop. Somebody stop. Somebody stop. Somebody stop. Somebody stop. But it's also <coughs> it's just local news. <coughs> local news and sport. Right, right, right. Hiya. Hiya, David. Oh, here we go. Halfway down, page 16 there.
Ja, was ist das? <lacht> Real work. Ja. Ja. Danke, ja. Okay, members, thank you very much. Um, and I now declare the meeting open to the public. Um, can I ask anyone in the public gallery to turn mobile phones off? Mobile tablet devices can be used through a Wi-Fi connection, and all devices should be muted. Password details are available in the gallery for anyone wanting to connect to the Assembly's Wi-Fi network. Uh, 3G and 4G should not be used, and no recordings or photographs are to be taken. So, members, I'm moving forward then to item 15 on our agenda, subordinate legislation. I refer you to the clerk's memo there on page 325, which sets um, out a proposed approach for the committee to take in relation to considering the backlog of subordinate legislation within its remit. The next stage of the meeting is to consider a number of statutory rules subject to negative resolution. Can I remind members that the statutory period to pray against the negative resolution is 30 calendar days or 10 days on which the Assembly has sat, after the date on which the statutory rule was laid before the Assembly, whichever of those is the longest. The committee needs to work through a backlog of SRs, members, and due to present circumstances, the remaining statutory period for some of today's SRs is very short. This is why we have prioritised negative SRs at this meeting and the start of next week's meeting. If a prayer of annulment was to be brought by the committee, we would need to take advice from the clerk for the business office to see if there's a plenary opportunity in which that could be scheduled. I refer members to pages 3 to 8 onwards of ECPs containing the relevant SRs to be considered. SRs relating to Social Security are being taken first. So we have a number of officials in attendance today from the department and should any members have any questions in relation to any of those rules. So uh, I'd now like to welcome David Tarr and a number of his team to the meeting today. Can I ask David, Haley Ward, Helen Vaughan, Michelle Grills and Nicola Boyle um, are, are seated here at the table. I note that while this is not an ideal approach to consideration of subordinate legislation, it is a practical approach to dealing with the current backlog. We have delegated authority to the examiner of statutory rules and we have noted her views on the list of SRs before us today. So we'll maybe now go to you, David, and uh, ask you to give us a short summary of the SRs being considered. Yes, uh, uh, thank you, Chair and committee members, for the opportunity to update these today on some of the statutory rules the Department uh, for Communities has made in the absence of the Assembly. Uh, I'm joined today by colleagues uh, from my team who are responsible for the development of the policy and legislation uh, that you're going to be considering today. Uh, the statutory rules you're being asked to consider uh, cover a range of issues relating to Social Security benefits, pensions and child maintenance. Rules, as you've already said, Chair, are subject to a negative resolution procedure. They have been made by the Department and most have already come into operation. Uh, as I'm sure members are aware, the principle of parity operates on the basis that Northern Ireland has the same range of Social Security benefits, which are paid at the same rates and subject to the same conditions as in Great Britain, provided for in Section 87 of the Northern Ireland Act 1998. In order to ensure there was no adverse impact on the delivery of benefits, pensions and child maintenance in Northern Ireland, the Department has continued to make legislation that maintains parity with the changes made by the Department of Work and Pensions in GB. All the rules before you were made under the authority of the Northern Ireland Executive Formation etc. Act 2022. Public interest tests, Section 75 screening and rural needs impact assessments have also been completed. In reaching a decision on the need to make each new piece of legislation, the circumstances of people in Northern Ireland have been considered by the Department. Uh, due to the volume of legislation to be considered today, I am not proposing to provide a briefing on each rule at this stage. Rather, my colleagues and I are available to provide a brief summary of the effect of the legislation. And of course, we're happy to answer any questions and clarify any issues that members may have. Thank you, David. Um, and I suppose I just uh, uh, one question really in relation to one of the rules, um, and it's SR 2023, number 93. So. I had noted when I was going through the pack there that it, it makes mention of the fact that the regulations were referred to the Social Security Advisory Committee for scrutiny at their meeting on the 22nd of March 2023. It goes on to say the committee did not take the regulations on formal reference. So I'm wondering what does that mean and why, why did they not? 
So the, the, the Social Security Advisory Committee do have the, obviously the power to scrutinise uh, legislation, uh, Social Security legislation. Uh, in most cases, this will be legislation made by DWP. Where the, the legislation that we make in the Department for Communities is a parity issue, but it's already been simply maintaining parity with GB, the, the Social Security Advisory Committee generally uh, will not look at it. Uh, also, the, this particular piece of legislation was making technical amendments, so it wasn't uh, considered appropriate. There wasn't really a policy issue for them that was unique to Northern Ireland. They felt that it was appropriate for them to consider. As members may be aware, there is a Northern Ireland representative uh, on SEC, and recently there's been an advisory member from Northern Ireland uh, also appointed. So Northern Ireland is represented uh, on that committee. Okay, thank you. And that, that does clarify that. Um, the department then, the second part of that, and from recent to CMSR, it indicates that the department has conducted a screening exercise on the legislative proposals. An impact was identified on disabled category applicants which the department considered and deemed it to be justified. So can you give us a little more detail in relation to what that was and, 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 and the basis upon which it was deemed justified? Um, let me defer to Helen here. If she's... Yeah, we may have to get um, the detail. May have to, we, um, we may have to get back to you on that, just to, 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 to clarify. That, uh, we, 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 we will have details in the, the screening yeah. and why that was... Okay, uh, okay thank you. And um, members then, I'm, I'm opening up to members, if there's any of the SRs that you have any particular questions around. Why do we have officials? No, members all content? Mm -hmm. Okay, Clark. There may be a delay um, if we're waiting for officials to come back. In, in terms of the relevant time frames here. Yeah. So um committee will need to make a decision in relation to each of these ones today. Okay. And there's no additional time available at ninety three? No. Oh. Um I can confirm ninety three is at approximately nine days sitting days at this stage. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I'm, we, I'm content. I'm content to get to, to get the answer. I, I take it that there, there has been. I think I, I, we can probably check the answer in, in space for a few minutes if we can ring back to the okay. office. Okay. okay. Yep. Be grateful for that. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Um, okay. So just double check, and then any final issues from members, uh, and if there's not, then we will uh, allow officials. And how will will you come back? Directly to us, or we, we can we can basically check this now outside, and I'll. Uh, Back in, either come back in. I don't know what the, the, the that project. is about halfway down our list. So if yep. you were able to, if you were able to do that, you could have another pause just before consideration of that particular rule chair. Yeah. Okay. And okay. we'll proceed to go through the ones that are before that on the list. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so uh, if you if you want to take your leave, then get that checked out first. Go back in. I'm just going to mark where it is here on the number, number twenty seven. Yeah. Thank you. So you could get through the eleven. Pardon? We could get through about the first eleven. Yeah, okay. Have a pause to get an um, explanation from the officials. Yeah. And then proceed if you're content. Yeah. And if necessary, we can move it back to the end of it as well. But hopefully they will be back at the time. We'll start moving our way through them. So members, now we begin the process of going through each of these SRs individually. Um and, and there's a, a a necessity for us to read them through and to, to agree our position in relation to them one by one, um, and that, that will take us a little bit of time, but we'll start. So um, I'll go then, first of all, to 16, which is SR 2022-230, the Social Security Habitual Residence and Past Presence Amendment Number 2, Regulations, Northern Ireland 2022. I refer members to the papers in tab 16 of the pack, and ask if members have any objection to the rule. No objection, members. Thank okay. you. Yep, there are no objections to that rule. Um, so I will then put it that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2022 230, the Social Security Habitual Residence and Past Presence Amendment Number no. 2 Regulations NA 2022, and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules Report, has no objection to the rule. Are we agreed? Agreed. Great. Great. Thank you, members. David, before I go to the second, can, are you able to confirm it? Just checking it now. Yes, okay. So we're moving on then to 17, which is SR 2023-80, the Social Security Habitual Residence and Past Presence Amendment Regulations, NA 2023. I refer members to papers in tab 17 of the pack and ask if members have any objection to the rule. 
could, could you give the page number to help us keep up? Um, Did you have that? 17 is 338. Okay. Will I ask again if members any objection to the rule? No. no. Um, so, therefore, I propose that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2023-80, the Social Security Habitual Residence and Past Presence Amendment Regulations 2023, and subject to the examiner of statutory rules, report has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. 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 Thank you, members. Moving on to number 18, SR 2023-97, the Social Security Income and Capital Disregards Amendment Regulations 2023. I refer members to the papers in tab 18 of the pack and ask if members have any objections to the rule. No. 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 Is 352. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so I put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2023-97. Social Security Income and Capital Disregards Amendment Regulations NA 2023 and subject to the examiner of statutory rules report has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. 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 Thank you, members. Number 19, SR 2023-118, Social Security Infected Blood Capital Disregard Amendment Regulations NA 2023. I refer members to the papers in tab 19 of the pack and ask if members have any objection to that rule. What page, Clerk? It's 370. 370. Any objections to that rule, members? No. No. No, thank you. So therefore, I put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2023-118, the Social Security Infected Blood Capital Disregard Amendment Regulations, NA 2023, and subject to the examiner of statutory rules report, has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you, members. SR 2023-184, the Social Security Habitual Residence and Past Presence and Capital Disregards Amendment Regulations, NA 2023. I refer members to the papers in tab 20 and page 381 of the pack and ask if members have any objection to this rule. No. 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 Thank you, no. members. Then I will put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2023 184. Social Security Habitual Residence and Past Presence and Capital Disregards Amendment Regulations, NA 2023, and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules Report, has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. 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 Thank you, members. Uh, number 21, SR 2022-182, the Social Security Medical Evidence and Statutory Sick Pay Medical Evidence Amendment, number 2, Regulations, NA 2022. I refer members to the papers in tab 21 of the pack, page 401. 401, and ask if members have any objection to the rule. No. No, no thank you. Therefore, members, I put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2022-182, the Social Security Medical Evidence and Statutory Sick Pay Medical Evidence Amendment Number 2, Regulations, NA 2022, and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules Report, has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you, members. Number 22, SR 2022-202, the Social Security Amendment Regulations, NA 2022. I refer members to the papers in tab 22 and page 414 of the pack and ask if members have any objection to the rule. No. no. Thank you, members. Therefore, I put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2022-202, Social Security Amendment Regulations, NA 2022, and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules Report, has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. 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 SR 2022-211, the Housing Benefit and Universal Credit Victims of Domestic Abuse and Victims of Modern Slavery Amendment Regulations, NA 2022, I refer members to the papers in tab 23 of the pack and ask if members have any, tab 23 page 421. 421, and ask if members have any objection to the rule. No. No. Thank you, members. Therefore, I put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2022-211, the Housing Benefit and Universal Credit Victims of Domestic Abuse and Victims of Modern Slavery Amendment Regulations NA 2022 and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules report has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you, members. 24. 
SR 2023-31. The Loans for Mortgage Interest Amendment Regulations, NI 2023. I refer members to the papers in tab 24 on page... 431. Of the pack, thank you, Clerk. Uh, of the pack, page 431 of the pack, and ask if members have any objection to that rule. No. 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 So, therefore, members, the, I put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2023 31, the Loans for Mortgage Interest Amendment Regulations, NA 2023, and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules Report, has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you, members. Number 25, SR 2023-35, the Social Security Revaluation of Earnings Factors Order, NI 2023. Refer members to the papers in tab 25 of the pack on page... 441. And ask if members have any objection to the rule. No. no. Therefore, can I put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2023-35, the Social Security Revaluation of Earnings Factors Order, NI 2023, and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rule Report, has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Um, so we're moving to 2020. So, sorry, I, I need then to move to ask Jennifer Gibb to take a seat at the witness table. Um, Jennifer will be dealing with the remaining SRs. So and if Michelle can take a seat in the public gallery, please. Do we have Michelle? Yes. Yep, thank you, Michelle. Um, so could you go ahead, uh, Jennifer, please, and give us your briefing? Uh, uh, sorry, no, Jen um, Jennifer, she's just here to answer specific questions on her specific case. Okay, yep. that, that's, sorry. that's sorry, fine. Sorry, thank, thank yeah, you, just Jennifer. confusion, just to try and fit everybody in. No problem, no problem. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit difficult with the, with the, but we do appreciate having you all here. So. Item 26, members, then, is SR 2023-67, the Social Security Benefits, Claims and Payments Amendment Regulations, NI 2023. I refer members to the papers in tab 26 of the pack and ask if members have any objection to the rule. No. no. Assuming there are no objections, then we... So given that there are no objections, I put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2023-67, the Social Security Benefits Claim, Claims and Payments Amendment Regulations, NA 2023, and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules Report has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you. So we're moving then to that 27, that one that we had raised with you, David. Yes, so, so members, can I propose that we suspend the meeting just for five minutes um, in order to get that clarification on that SR? Thank you, members, and suspend the waiting, please. Let me confirm closed. Committee Room 29, signed. <phone rings> Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. <phone rings> Committee Room 29, signed. <phone rings> Committee Room 29, signed. Committee Room 29, signed. <phone rings> Committee Room 29, signed. <phone rings> Committee Room 29, signed.
There's no one on there, is it? I've now confirmed. Okay, members confirm we're back in, in open session. So members, I'm going to leave item, t with by your leave, leave item 27 to the end and we'll go through the rest of the SRs. Members content? Great. Great. Thank you. So moving on then to item 28, which is SR 2023-192, the Social Security, Widows, Benefit and Retirement Pensions, Amendment Regulations, NI 2023. I refer members to the papers in tab 28 of the pack and ask if members have any objection to that rule. Page no. number? 473. 473. No objection. No objection, members. Thank you. Therefore, I'm going to put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2023-192. The Social Security <coughs> Widows Benefit and Retirement Pensions Amendment Regulations 20, NI 2023 and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules report has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you, members. Item 29, um, SR 2022-179. The Social Fund Child Funeral Fund Number 2 Regulations NI 2022. Refer members to the papers in tab 29 of the pack and page 480 and ask if members have any objection to the rule no objection no thank you then members i put the question that the committee for communities has considered sr 2022 179 the social fund child funeral fund number two regulations ni 2022 and subject to the examiner of statutory rules report has no objection to the rule are members agreed yes. Yes. agreed thank you number 30 the social Fund winter fuel payment temporary increase regulations NA. I refer members to the papers in tab 30 of the pack and ask if members have any objections to the rule. No, no objections. Page number, sorry, clerk. 489. Uh, assuming there are no objections, so sorry, we will go to the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2023 85. The Social Fund Winter Fuel Payment Temporary Increase Regulations NA 2022 and subject to the Examiner of Statute Rules Report has no objection to the rules. To that rule, are members agreed? Agreed. 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 Item 31, SR 2022 222. The Social Fund Budgeting Loans, Applications and Miscellaneous Provisions Regulations 2022. I refer members to the papers in tab 31 and page. 497 of the pack and ask if members have any objection to the rule no, no. thank you members then put the question that the committee for communities has considered sr 2022 222 the social fund budgeting loans applications and miscellaneous provisions regulations na 2022 and subject to the examiner statutory rules report has no objection to the rule our members agreed, agreed. agreed. thank you members Item 32, which is SR 2023-86, the Social Fund, Maternity and Funeral Expenses, General and Social Security Claims and Payments, Amendment Regulations 2023. I refer members to the papers in tab 32 of the pack and ask if members have any objection. Tab 32 page. 506. No. 506. Any objection, members? No. 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 Thank you. Therefore, I put the question that the Committee for Communities <coughs> has considered SR 2022-222, the Social Fund Budgeting Loans, Applications and Miscellaneous Provisions, Regulations NI 2022, and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules Report, has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. agreed. Item 33, the Social SR 2023-96, the Social Security Budgeting Loans, Electronic Communications, Amendment Order, NI 2023. I refer members to the papers in tab 33 and page 518 of the pack and ask if members have any objection to this rule. No. No. Thank you members. I therefore put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2022-222, the Social Fund Budgeting Loans Applications and Miscellaneous Provisions Regulations NI 2022 and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules Report has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you, members. 34, SR 2023-190, the Social Fund Maternity and Funeral Expenses General Amendment Regulations, NI 2023. I refer members to the pa papers in tab 34 and page 525 of the pack and ask if members have any objection to the rule. No, 
No. 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 Thank you, members. Therefore, put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2022-222, the <coughs> Social Fund Budgeting Loans Applications and Miscellaneous Provisions Regulations NI 2022, and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules Report, has no objection to the rule. Are we agreed, members? Agreed. 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 Thank you, members. SR no, item 35, SR 2022-194, the Universal Credit Transitional Provisions Amendment Regulations 2022. I refer members to the papers in tab 35 and page 532 of the pack and ask if members have any objection to the rule. No. Thank you, members. Therefore, put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2022-222 the Social Fund Budgeting Loans Applications and Miscellaneous Provisions. Am I in the wrong place, Sean? No, no the problem is a problem with the numbers. Can I ask you just to break for I five minutes. Yeah. 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 It's, an, it's the numbering. Okay. So, so, members, I propose we suspend the meeting for another uh, five minutes just in order to, uh, to check address the numbering. That, to check the numbering. Thank you, members. Committee Room 29, Sound. <coughs> Committee Room 29, Sound. <coughs> Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. <coughs> Committee Room 29, Sound. <coughs> Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. <coughs> Committee Room 29, Sound. <coughs> Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. <coughs> Committee Room 29, Sound. <coughs> Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. <coughs> Committee Room 29, Sound. <coughs> Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. <coughs> Committee Room 29, Sound. <coughs> 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 
Committee Room 29, Sound. 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 Thank you, members. We are back in open session, and members, we are just going to go back there to just for clarity, back to item thirty-two, which is SR twenty twenty-three eighty-six, the Social Fund Maternity and Funeral Expenses. General and Social Security Claims <coughs> and Payments Amendment Regulations NA 2023. I refer members to the papers in tab 32, page 506 of your pack, and ask if members have any objection to the rule. No. 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 Thank you, members. Therefore, then, I put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2023-86, the Social Fund Budgeting Loans, Applications and Miscellaneous Provisions, Regulations NA 2022 and subject to the examiner of statutory rules report has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. Thank you, members. Item 33, which is SR 2023 96, the Social Security Budgeting Loans Electronic Communications Amendment Order NA 2023. I refer members to the papers in tab 33, page 518 of the pack, and ask if members have any objection to this rule. No. 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 Thank you, members. Therefore, I would ask that the Committee for Communities uh, has considered SR 2023-96, the Social Fund Budgeting Loans, Applications and Miscellaneous Provisions, Regulations, NA 2022, and subject to the Examiner Statutory Rules Report, has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you, members. SR Item 34, which is SR 2023-190, the Social Fund Maternity and Funeral Expenses General Amendment Regulations, NA 2023. I refer members to the papers in tab 34, page 525 of your pack and ask if members have any objection to the rule. No. 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 Thank you. Can I therefore put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2023-190, the Social Fund Budgeting Loans, Applications and Miscellaneous Provisions, Regulations NA 2022 and subject to the examiner of statutory rules report has no objection to the rule. Are we agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you, members. <laughs> Item 35, SR 2022 194, the Universal Credit Transitional Provisions Amendment Regulations NA 2022. I refer members to the papers in tab 35, page 532 of the pack, and ask if members have any objection to the rule. No. 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 I will therefore, members, ask you to consider that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2022-194, the Universal Credit, sorry, the Social Fund Budgeting Loans, Applications and Miscellaneous Provisions, Regulations NA 2022, and subject to Examiner of Statutory Rules Report has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? That's agreed. incorrect. Sorry, Chair. Yes, well, need to you. suspend. Yeah. Okay, members, we need to suspend again for five minutes if we can go into suspension. Or just quickly, closed. all of those ones you read out. Committee Room 29, Sound. <phone rings> Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound.
Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound.
Committee Room 29, signed. 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 Committee Room 29, signed.
Committee Room 29, Sound. 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 Committee Room 29, Sound.
Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Committee Room 29, Sound. Confirmed open. Hmm? I apologize. Okay. okay, members, we're back into open session. Clerk, you. Yeah. yeah, I apologize. I had misnumbered some of the statements to be made and they were transferred from our agreements. So I apologize to the chair, I apologize to officials and the rest of the committee. And um, we'll get back on track now. We need to take from number 32 on the item on the agenda. Okay, members, so going then to item 32, which is SR 2023-86, the Social Fund Maternity and Funeral Expenses, General and Social Security Claims and Payments, Amendment Regulations, NA 2023. I refer members to the papers in tab 32 of the pack and page... 506. 506, and ask if members have any objection to the rule? No. no. Okay, members, then I will put the question that the commu Committee for Communities has considered SR 2023-86, the Social Fund Maternity and Funeral Expenses, General and Social Security Claims and Payments, Amendment Regulations, NA 2023, and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules Report, has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. Thank you, members. SR 33, or er, number 33, item 33, which is SR 2023-96, the Social Security Budgeting Loans Electronic Communications Amendment Order, NA 2023. I refer members to the pap papers in tab 33 and page 518 of the pack and ask if members have any objection to that rule. No. 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 Thank you, members. Then I'll put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR... No, sorry, we're over the page. That the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2023-96, the Social Security Budgeting Loans Electronic Communications Amendment Order, NA 2023, and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules Report, has no objection to the rule. Are we agreed? Yeah, agreed. 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 Thank you, members. Uh, item 34, which is SR 2023-190, the Social Fund Maternity and Funeral Expenses General Amendment Regulations, NA 2023. I refer members to the papers in tab 34 and page 525 of the pack and ask if members have any objection to the rule. No. 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 Thank you, members. Therefore, put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2023190, the Social Fund Maternity and Funeral Expenses. General Amendment Regulations, NA 2023, and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules Report, has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you, members. Uh, item 35, which is SR 2022-194, the Universal Credit Transitional Provisions Amendment Regulations, NA 2022. I refer members to the papers in tab 35 of the pack, page... 532. And ask if members have any objection to that rule? No. 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 Thank you. Therefore, members, I would ask that the commun Committee for Communities has considered SR 2022-194, the Universal Credit Transitional Provisions Amendment Regulations, NA 2022, and subject to Examiner of Statutory Rules Report has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you, members. Item 36, SR 2022-194, Two, two, three. The Universal Credit Administrative Earnings Threshold Amendment 
Regulations, NA 2022. I refer members to the papers in tab 36 and page 547. Off your pack and ask if members have any objection to this rule. No. no. Therefore, I put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2023 2022 223, the Universal Credit Administrative Earnings Threshold Amendment Regulations, NA 2022, and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules report, has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Yeah. Agreed. Thank you, members. Moving on to item 37, which is SR 2023 3. The Universal Credit Administrative Earnings Threshold Amendment Regulations, NA 2023. I refer members to the papers in tab 37 on page 556 five, of the pack and ask if members have any objection to the rule. No. 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 Uh, therefore, members, I put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2023 3, the Universal Credit Administrative Earnings Threshold Amendment Regulations. NA 2023 and subject to the examiner of statutory rules report has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you, members. Moving on to item 38, which is SR 2023 90, the Universal Credit Child Care Amendment Regulations, NA 2023. I refer members to the papers in tab 38 of the pack and ask if members have any objection to the rule. No. no. Thank you. Then I put the question to members that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 202390, the Universal Credit Child Care Amendment Regulations 2020, NA 2023, and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules report, has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Item 39, which is SR 2024 5, the Universal Credit Transitional Provisions. Provisions Amendment Regulations NA 2024. I refer members to the papers in tab 39 of the rule and page 573. 39 of the pack and 573 is the page number. And ask if members have any objection to that rule. No. 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 Thank you, members. Then um, I put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2024 5. The Universal, I'm just checking that. Yep. SR 2024 5, the Universal Credit Transitional Provisions Amendment Regulations, NA 2024, and subject to Examiner of Statutory Rules report, has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you, members. Item 40 is, is SR 2024 18, the Universal Credit and Job Seekers Allowance Work Search and Work Availability Requirements dash Limitations Amendment. Regulations NA 2024. I refer members to the papers in tab 40 and page 584 of the pack and ask if members have any objection to the rule. No. no. Thank you, members. <laughs> Therefore, put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2024 18, the Universal Credit and Job Seekers Allowance, Work Search and Work Availability Requirements. Dash limitations amendment regulations NA 2024 and subject to the examiner of statutory rules report has no objection to the rule. Our members agreed. Agreed. Thank you, members. Moving on to item 41, SR 2022 192, the occupational pension schemes, collective money purchase schemes, modifications and consequential and miscellaneous amendments regulations NA 2022. I refer members to the papers in tab 41 and page 592 of the pack and ask if members have any objection to the rule. No. no. Thank you, members. Assu uh, the, I will put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2022 192, the Occupational Pension Schemes, Collective Money Purchase Schemes, Modifications and Consequential and Miscellaneous Amendments. Regulations NA 2022 and subject to the examiner of statutory rules report has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you. <laughs> Item 42, which is SR 2022 208, the occupational and personal pension schemes, disclosure of information, statement, statements of benefits, money purchase benefits, amendment regulations NA 2022. I refer members to the papers in tab 42 and page 651 of your pack 
and ask if members have any objections to the rule. No. no. Thank you, members. Therefore, I will put the question that the Committee for Communities has SR 20 has considered SR 2022-208, the Occupational and Personal Pension Schemes, Disclosure of Information, Statements of Benefits, Money Purchase Benefits, Amendment Regulations, NI 2022, and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules report has no objection to this rule. Our members agreed. 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 Thank you, members. Item 43, SR 2022. 209, the Occupational Pension Schemes, Climate Change, Governance and Reporting, Amendment, Modification and Transitional Provisional Regulations, NI 2022. I refer members to the papers in tab 43 and page 670 six of the pack and ask if members have any objection to the rule. No. Therefore, I'll put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2022-209, the Occupational Pension Schemes, Climate Change, Governance and Reporting, Amendment, Modification and Transitional Provision Regulations, NI 2022, and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules Report, has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. Thank you, members. Item 44, SR 2022-209. 210. The Occupational Pension Schemes, Investment, Employer Related Investments by Master Trusts, Amendment Regulations, NI 2022. I refer members to the papers in tab 44 and page 680 off the pack and ask if members have any objection to the rule. No. 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 Thank you, members. Therefore, I will put the question that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2022-210, the Occupational Pension Schemes Investment Employer Related Investments by Master Trusts Amendment Regulations NA 2022, and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules Report, has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Agreed. Okay, members, I'm then going to return to item 27, as we had discussed earlier. So, um, David, can you go ahead and please yes, give for the McCulloch Hill here. Apologies um, to the you. committee for not having the um, information to hand previously. Um, just to clarify, yes, we have noted that they, there was an impact under these reg, um, regulations on disabled category applicants, but just to clarify that um, the, the, the intent behind the, the amendment in question was to ensure that entitlement under UC um, is treated as the same way as for um, legacy claimants. The amendment in question was to um, uh, Schedule 2 to the Universal Credit Transitional Provisions Northern Ireland Regulations 2016. The amendment clarifies that for Universal Credit Couple Claims, the highest rate of transitional severe disability premium element will be payable if the higher severe disability premium rate was payable in their previous legacy benefit. Um, and no person has since become a carer for either of them because in circumstances under legacy benefits where if somebody becomes a, a carer that will impact on their SDP. So the purpose of the regulations on the amendment was to clarify that the entitlement under UC would be treated in the same way as it would be for a legacy claimant. So it's to ensure that they would both be tr treated in the same way. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's, no, it was, it was, uh, it was just puzzling so that's that's very helpful yes, and thank you for that um so if members will yeah so i'll go then to consideration formal consideration of that item 27 and that is sr 2023 93 the social security universal credit and state pension miscellaneous amendments regulations na 2023 i refer members to the papers in tab 27 on page have a page there? 459. 459, thank you. Thank you. Of the pack and ask if members have any objection to that rule. No. 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 So I would therefore ask that the Committee for Communities has considered SR 2023 93, the Social Security, Universal Credit and State Pension Miscellaneous Amendments Regulations, NA 2023, and subject to the Examiner of Statutory Rules Report, has no objection to the rule. Are members agreed? Great. Great. Thank you, members. Um, I then want to thank David. I want to thank you and your team for, for being here today and for attending the committee and assisting members with consideration of these SRs. And I can now uh, invite you to leave the witness table and get back thank to you. what I'm sure are busy days. So thank you. Thank you.
thank you. Okay, member, so I, I can advise that the same process will be followed for the next two meetings until the backlogs of SRs have been addressed and we'll, we'll make sure and get that. Yeah, we'll, we'll make sure and get those uh, those those formatting issues, which I presume is what it was, uh, we, we get those addressed and, and move, again, move through. Yeah. Okay, members. So, members, moving on to item 45, any other business? And just before I put that question, members, if I could say, in general, if members of things they want to raise, I prefer, and I think it's more beneficial if I raised before, and, and keep AOB to things that are absolutely have only arisen or, or that is unavoidable to raise. Now, I'm not trying to curtail members in any sense in that, but I just think it's more productive if we can be, if we can be as, a, as prepared for that as possible. So in terms of any other business for today, do members have any other business? No, thank you, members. Date, time and location then. Final item, member, members, is 46. Date, time and location of the next meeting. And our next meeting will be at 10 a.m. on Thursday, 22nd of February, 2024, here in room 29, Parliament Buildings. The meeting is now adjourned, and thank you very much, members. Thank you, too. <coughs> Committee Room 29, Sound.